So we are on day three, and today is going to be the story of the sinful woman. And this is a beautiful, beautiful story. And uh, let me show you a picture. Um, so this is just a picture I got off Google. Um, and it's going to be in Luke 7, 36 through 50. All right. And when we did the lesson the other night, I had made these tiny little... Um, containers full of ointment um, that were uh, had put some lavender essential oil in it so we could actually smell it so we could really you know get ourselves in the um, in the zone so if you want to kind of go there in your mind of kind of maybe your favorite perfume um, and we can uh, you can kind of you know think about that um, so here we go I had heard of him the man they called Jesus they said he was a prophet, that he healed the sick, forgave sins, and spoke words that stirred the hearts of all who listened. My life had been one filled with darkness, and I knew I was nothing more than a sinner in the eyes of those around me. But something inside me told me that this Jesus could offer me what nothing else ever had, grace. I knew he would be at Simon the Pharisee's house. I wasn't invited, but I had to go. I had to see him for myself. So I came uninvited with a deep longing in my heart. And I brought with me something precious, an alabaster flask filled with expensive perfume. So we're just going to pretend this is it, y'all. Um, it was the most valuable thing I owned. I had saved it for something important, something that could mark a moment of change. But as I entered that house, all I could think of was him. There he sat at the table, surrounded by those who looked down on me, judging me. They didn't know what it was like to be lost, to be caught in a life of shame and re regret. But I saw Jesus, and I knew he was different. I couldn't hold back my tears any longer. They began to fall, each one a reflection of my sorrow, my guilt, and my longing for redemption. The tears dripped onto his feet, and without thinking, I bent down to wipe them. I had no towel, no cloth, only my hair, and so I let it down and used it to wipe his feet. I kissed his feet over and over, unable to stop, feeling the weight of my past lifted with every tear I shed. And then without even thinking about what I was doing, I took the alabaster flask in my hands and I poured out the perfume. The fragrance filled the room. Mingling with the scent of my tears, I knew I was giving all I had, everything I was, everything I had ever been at his feet. I heard the murmurs of the others, the Pharisees, criticizing me, judging me. If he were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman she is, they whispered, but I didn't care. All I cared about was him. I needed his forgiveness. I needed his love. Jesus then turned to Simon the host and told him a parable. He spoke of two men who owed money, one a large debt, another a small one. Both were forgiven their debts, and Jesus asked, Which one will love more? Simon answered, The one who was forgiven the greater debt. Then Jesus looked at me with such compassion and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house, and you gave me no water to wash my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wipe them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but she has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has poured this perfume on my feet. Then he turned to me and said, Your sins are forgiven. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. In that moment, everything changed. The weight of my guilt, my shame, was gone. I had come to him broken, but I had left whole. The alabaster flask, once a symbol of my past, my sin, and my regrets, was now a symbol of my offering, my act of love, and beginning of my new life. I had nothing left but my heart, and I gave it all to him. And in return, he gave me something far greater, his forgiveness, his peace, and his love. And that is in Luke 7, 36 through 50. Such a beautiful story, and... Um, there's another woman that we're going to talk about, uh, Mary of Bethany, that did very similar. And so um, it's um, really just so beautiful of how they just poured out 
everything they had and um and so um i had wrote i'd done a lesson in the past on this and um i had wrote um here beside the verses does my worship interrupt the broken world of other people around me do they sense his presence in me and um because when you think about it when here they were all eating dinner and she breaks this whole jar of um, perfume and you can imagine how strong that smell would have been and so it literally her worship interrupted um, everything and so I'm gonna read that one more time does my worship interrupt the broken world of other people around me do they sense his presence in me so that's all for today y'all I'll be back tomorrow with day four